I'm a youth pastor in Florida. Uh, my wife and I just celebrated 13 years of marriage. And we decide, you know what? We don't like a clean house. We don't like to sleep. So let's just adopt a bunch of kids. And so we have so many stories that I could tell you. But tonight, I don't want to come to you as a youth pastor. I want to come to you tonight as a dad. And I have so many different stories that I could share with you. But tonight, I want to share a story that's so impactful in my life, in our family's life. Tonight, I want to share a story with you about my son, Randall. If you see on the screen, this is my son, Randall. He's 13 years old. And tonight, I want to give you just a glimpse into his life through three moments. Moment number one, we'll call video games. Do we have any gamers in the house? Yeah. Quite a bit of it, yeah. And so Randy, Randall is this type of kid that's so clever. Like any game system, any game, he knows all about it. And what he likes to do is he's like, yeah, I'm gonna be a video game champion. And he tries to teach all his siblings how to actually do it, especially dad. But dad's been around for a while and he can tell me all the different things to do, but I know I'm going to dominate him once we get up to it. And so I remember this time and time and time again that we went to play and I just got destroyed <laughs> horribly by my son, not like once or like 50 times. And so I had to kind of bow out. But those moments of just being annihilated by my son, these moments together are just so priceless. Moment two I want to share with you is called ice cream. My son Randall loves to journal. He loves to draw pictures of a multitude of things that he does. And there was a moment that he actually captured. A couple of years ago, my wife and I took Randall to a local ice cream shop. I sat here, my wife was here, and across from us was my son Randall. And this was the hardest moment that I ever had to do, was to work up enough coverage to actually look my son straight in the eyes and tell him, Randall, the doctor called and he says that you have cancer. And in those moments, I could see his eyes get really wide open with fear. And I looked at him, I said, listen, cancer does not define you. It does not have your identity. Your identity and your, is just so wrapped up in Jesus. You're defined only by Jesus. And I can honestly tell you to even this day that when I look at ice cream, I come back to that moment. Moment number three is called hope. Now after months of chemotherapy, after months of radiation, Randall was on schedule to have another 10 hour surgery. And in the morning hours, we kind of set up a camera on the side just to document his journey. And what happened next was so impactful, so I would say a moment that I will never forget. We read scripture and I looked at Randy and this is what transpired. Randy, do you want anything you want to share with anyone? That all the people around the world that have been praying for you I just really appreciate the people who have been praying for me, especially the people who have donated blood. I really thank you all. And it's just very supportive how you guys have helped me out through this whole thing. It's not just the good attitude and um, my family, the friends who helped me, it's also God. Amen to that. I would love to bring my son out here right now. I would love for my son to come up here and to share with you how God has used him, for him to come up here and tell you, listen, his prayer was that Jesus would be known through his circumstances. 
But unfortunately tonight, Randy can't be here because this past December, he went home to be with the Lord and the one he served. But this, and this is the most important thing, is that his story doesn't end with cancer. His story does not end in death. His story does not end in heartbreak. Why? Because my son had redemption as his theme and the redeemer as a central figure. His brokenness was made whole with Jesus. He was resolved to say, listen, Jesus, I'm all in. It doesn't matter if I have cancer, no matter where I'm at, I wanna glorify you in any aspect of my life. Therefore, I remember the days that I would have to pick my son up because he was just too weak to go on his own power. I remember the days when I would have to sit him on my knee to help brush his teeth. I remember the days that I would have to wash him because he just, his arms wouldn't move that well. I remember the days that I would have to clothe him. I also remember the days that he would have enough strength and I would sit back and watch him move and he would just have, he'd just be huffing and puffing because he had no strength. I remember even the days where he would try to push himself even further and he would just exhaust his legs where he would have kind of just this limp that would take place. But there is another day because no one lips into heaven. Everybody runs. So I have a question tonight for you, a simple question. What is your story telling? Because if redemption is not the central theme of your life and the redeemer is not the central figure of your life, then honestly, your story isn't worth telling. But if redemption is the theme of your life and the redeemer is a central figure in your life, then not only is your story worth telling, it's worth imitating. Tonight as you leave on the back tables, you can go by and just pick up a bracelet that we've made as a reminder. And it has two words, redemption and redeemer. I encourage you to go home and to say, listen, no matter my circumstances, no matter how my life is, I want to be resolved to Jesus. I will do whatever it takes to let my friends know that Jesus is the only way to live, that I can be fixated on Jesus no matter what the circumstances are. Let me pray for you. God, we come before you. We thank you for faithful men and women. We thank you for these students. Lord, we pray for them as as they go back We pray that they'll have a boldness, that they will be resolved to you and let people know that they are made whole in you and that you are the central figure in their lives. We pray for boldness. We pray just for their opportunities to meet people where they're at. And Lord, we thank you that we can go back and not just understand that we're gonna just tell a story, but our story revolves around you. And then when people see that, they will look past our lives and they will see Jesus. And they say, I wanna imitate that in my life. We praise in your name, amen.